you, Mr. President, on the assumption of the presidency of the UN Security Council for the month of June. I also want to thank the briefers, the SRSG, the SRCC, and the executive director of WFB for the wide explanation of the issues of Somalia and the situation, the, cu the current situation of Somalia. Mr. President, it is an honor to stand before you today as the president of Somalia, representing the hopes and the aspirations of the Somali people. I would like to begin by expressing our health our heartfelt gratitude to the United Nations Security Council for its unwavering support and strategic partnership with Somalia over the decades. This is a critical moment in our country's history as we simultaneously pursue state-building efforts, combat the menace of terrorist group Al-Shabaab, and address the challenges posed by severe droughts. In this speech, I will provide an update on political and security developments in Somalia, and I will advocate for the total lifting of the 31-year-old arms embargo that has limited our ability to protect our citizens, enforce the rule of law, and secure our borders. We recognize that defeating al-Shabaab requires a multifaceted approach that includes capable and effective security forces, an inclusive state-building process, and the ability of the state to provide critical services to the public. My administration is working diligently on all these fronts to move our country towards durable peace and prosperity. Mr. President, let us begin with the progress we have achieved on the state building front. As some of you may have been aware, Somalia has faced significant challenges in reaching high-level political agreements on critical issues such as nature of intra-state relations and how, the transition, how to transition away from the indirect elections for a decade, for over a decade to however, since my, to over a decade. Since my election in May 2022, we have held six successive National Consultative Council meetings resulting in a consensus agreement with the federal member states on allocation of power, the judicial mob model, fiscal federalism, national security architecture, and the electoral model of the country. These agreements pave the way for a more inclusive representative governance systems in Somalia. Turning our attention to security and stability, I am pleased to inform you that the Somali National Army has made significant strides in the fight against al-Shabaab in partnership with local communities. Over the past year, we have witnessed the recovery of more than 70 towns from the, from the grip of the terrorist group, resulting in opening of the main north-south transportation routes and of vast areas of rich farmland in the country. We've also taken significant steps to tighten anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terror through regulations by closing over 300 accounts that provide illicit revenue to the terrorist group. This effort, along with the support to religious leaders' conference that, contest, that contested the ideological strategy of al-Shabaab, have dealt a blow to their operations and have challenged their legitimacy within the society. Mr. President, through a combination of our military offensive's ability to, to dislodge and disrupt al-Shabaab and the considerable advancement in the urban security, air security efforts through enhanced in intelligence efforts, we are witnessing a notable reduction in the terrorist attacks of our capital city, Mogadishu, and many other towns in south-central Somalia. Today, our capital is undergoing a remarkable transformation. Mogadishu's housing sector is experiencing a boom, and businesses are opening daily in the sectors of retail, hospitality, and healthcare, among others. This progress not only instills hope in our citizens, but also attracts investment and fosters a conducive environment for growth. 
In addition to these achievements, we have carried out over 240 stabilization activities in recently liberated communities in the regions of Hirshabelle and Gelmudik states over the last six months. For many of the people living in these towns, Al-Shabaab only, was only the authority for up to 15 years in the past. In the next phase of our stabilization program, we are focused on deepening the extension of the state and the social contract with recently, recently liberated communities through the provision of critical services such as policing, social services, governance, and reconciliation. In those, communities, in those communities. Looking ahead, the next phase in our fight against terrorism is Operation Black Lion. The op this operation, which is still be the most critical offensive, aims to liberate nearly all the remaining Al-Shabaab controlled territories across the country with the support of our frontline states, Kenya, Ethiopia, and Djibouti, we are confident that this campaign will significantly degrade Al-Shabaab and pave the way for a sustainable peace and security. Although we have encountered slight setback due to the rainfall and forced generation requirements, operations planning is well underway. A team of multinational planning and operational experts have been deployed to joint coordination command post in Mogadishu. This operation holds immense significance in our quest for lasting peace and security. In addition, we will have teams actively monitoring the civilian protection component in the upcoming military operation. And this demonstrates our commitment to minimize civilian harm and uphold human rights throughout the offensive. The resilience of our success against Al-Shabaab is evident that the enemy has not taken back an inch of we have recovered from them in the last 10 months. Mr. President, simultaneously with the planning of the current and future operations, we are also working towards the full withdrawal of Atmos forces from Somalia in line with the UN Security Council Resolution 2628 and 2670. The planning and implementation of the drawdown of Atmos forces is being executed in close coordination with a joint technical committee between Somalia and the mission, African Union mission in, 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 the, in the country. Phase one of the drawdown is nearing completion and the Somali National Army forces are assuming responsibility for forward operating bases while collapsing three others. Once phase one is completed, a joint assessment will be conducted to review the impact of the drawdown. The insights gained from the assessment will guide us through the phase two, anticipated to commence in September. I would like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude for the remarkable support Somalia has received from the African Union and AMISOM mission. The invaluable engagement of AMISOM in our nation has provided us the necessary room to make significant strides in our peace building and state building endeavors throughout the past 15 years. The sacrifices made by the courageous men and women from the troop contributing countries shall forever be etched in our collective memory in Somalia. Mr. President, on the humanitarian side, we have been able to avert famine through our sustained partnership with the United Nations and the general support from the United States and other donors. However, we remain committed to maintaining an effective and sustained response to ongoing drought, prioritizing the well-being of our people. I'm a strong advocate for genuine transition from traditional assistance to resilience-based investment by investing agro-pastoral communities and addressing the effects of climate change, such as through water catchment systems, regenerative agricultural practices, and feeder roads, we can enable those communities to sustain themselves economically and ensure 
their long-term well-being. Allow me, Mr. President, to share an example of the impact of such investment can have. The completion of only 30 kilometer Mogadishu Afgoye Road has not only improved economic livelihoods for farmers of the area, but also made certain food establishments more affordable for the residents of our capital, Mogadishu. Mr. President, on the economic front, we are nearing a significant milestone, achieving the heavily indebted poor countries' heavy completion point by the end of this year. Over the past decade, we have undertaken extensive macroeconomic and fiscal reform to position ourselves for the achievement. We, as we plan for the post hebic environment, we are forecasting on policies, we are focusing on policies that promote revenue generation and strengthen our public financial management systems. Furthermore, we recognize that our most valuable asset is our people. Therefore, we are committed to scaling up access to quality education and health services, especially for women and youth. As a former educator, I know how education can break the cycle of poverty. I grew up in a small rural community, and after my dad passed away, my mother struggled to ensure that I get an education. She was unable to read and write, and still she checked my homework regularly by seeing whether there, are, there were any red marks on the notes. <laughs> Thanks to her determination, I want to own to the contribution to establishment of one of the premier educational institutions in our country. I want all Somali children to have some, uh, such an opportunity in the, in the future. To that end, my administration has already undertaken a massive teacher recruitment campaign that will bring 10,000 new teachers into the system in my mandate, with 20% of them being a women. Already, 3,000 te teachers have been recruited and undergoing a training at this moment. These teachers are dispersed throughout the country, allocated to federal member states' education system. Mr. President, however, despite these remarkable advancements, our journey towards peaceful and prosperous Somalia faces formidable obstacles. The prolonged arms embargo imposed on our nation since 1992, which is the, lo the longest arms embargo in the history of the United Nations. Let me state clearly that Somalia of 2023 is not Somalia of 1992 and Somalia deserves this to be considered. It's essential to highlight the challenges that the army's embargo measures and notification processes present for Somalia security forces. Acquiring the necessary lethal capability has become an arduous task, hindering their ability to effectively combat al-Shabaab and provide lasting peace and stability in Somalia. Mr. President, and the distinguished delegates of the United Nations Security Council, this arms embargo is not contributing at any level to the interest of Somalia in the short term and in the long term. While we acknowledge the importance of international efforts to maintain peace and security, we believe it is crucial to reassess the situation in the light of the progress we've made towards establishing an effective weapons and ammunition management system, guided by the benchmarks proposed by the technical team from the Secretary General's office and reflect and endorse in Resolution 2006 and 2662. Somalia's National Weapons and Ammunition Management WAM strategy has been effectively implemented through result-based action plans. We have made substantial progress in the registration record keeping, stockpiling management, thanks to the establishment of comprehensive and centralized national weapons and ammunition management database in Somalia today. We've worked tirelessly to strengthen our legal and regulatory framework, including the introduction of firearms bill 
to control the position, manufacture, storage, and use of firearms in Somalia. These crucial undertakings have substantially mitigated the risk associated with trafficking, illegal position, and the improper use of weapons and ammunition in Somalia. These initiatives serve as a testament to our government's unwavering commitment to improving weapons and ammunition management frameworks in a coherent manner with the international standards. Mr. President, considering these significant developments, I implore you, distinguished delegates, to support our call for the complete lift of the arms embargo in Somalia. By doing so, you will empower us to assert our sovereignty, effectively combat terrorism, and build a peaceful and prosperous future for our nation. The menace of terrorists in Somalia is not limited to risk in Somalia only. It's a, it's a menace to the region, the continent, and the global at large. Together, let us seize this opportunity to unlock the food potential of Somalia, to create an inclusive and prosperous society, and to build a world where peace and security prevails forever. I thank you. I thank His Excellency President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed.